Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier. Thank you as ever for stopping by. Let me uh, whet your appetite with two uh, videos that we took um, when we visited the Savo this weekend. The first is a visit. We drove to Mazima Springs um, and you've got to watch it for about six minutes because we're wandering around the springs um, and then we encounter this uh, herd of elephants and it's really rather exciting. I missed the second video entirely, Rufus got it, Sunrise with a Herd of Elephants. This was at Finch Hattons itself. Um, and uh, look at how they uh, lift their leg uh, up. And it's as if they're, uh, they're using their leg like, like your ear to listen. They communicate seismically. It's really remarkable, and the footage is something that's really worth watching if you have some time. Macro Thoughts Austria announces a hundred year government bond. If I was in a government in the developed countries, I would be selling as much as I could. The pound surged to a one year high after UK inflation. Uh, accelerated more than forecast and we moved up to 133.10 as I speak. Um, so big move. Uh, it's now just less than 10% since the Brexit vote and plus 10% from a post-Brexit and 31 year low in January. And Jamie at Reuters kindly has put up um, a, a, an interesting graph to show all of that. Um, so quite a rebound. It's interesting to watch. I think it's not really justified this high right now. Investors saying being long Bitcoin is now the most crowded trade. You will recall I told us we missed a lot of the profits, but we got out a long time ago. Uh, bullish bets on the cryptocurrency are now considered the most crowded trade in financial markets, according to fund managers surveyed by Bank of America Merrill Lynch. 26% cited Bitcoin, surpassing the 22% who considered the most overheated wager to be the long trade on the NASDAQ composite index, shorting the dollar was third at 21%. China plans to ban trading of Bitcoin and other virtual currencies on domestic exchanges, Bloomberg News reported on Monday. And the last time I checked Bitcoin, oh, we're back above 4,000. We were below it earlier this morning. Um, JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is a fraud, that it will eventually blow up. Um, and it was quite interesting to see the responses out of people saying, you know, um, Bitcoin never took billions of bailout money. Words to that effect. Citrus Re, which is a catastrophe bond that traded down to 50 cents on the dollar before Hurricane Irma, yeah, now is back up at 81 cents as the hurricane made landfall, but not as much damage as initially thought. Home thoughts, I like this uh, Nairobi Urban Rush project on Behance. Um, I will thank Irungu for pointing that out to me, and that took me back to sentence I wrote many years ago, just before we were going to the Mara, when I said Nairobi has an edginess which can become very intense. And I thought that photograph um, exemplified that edginess I was speaking about. And then I like this photograph, The Power of the Matriarch by David Lloyd. In Kenya's Masai Mara National Reserve, a herd of elephants trekked to their evening waterhole. The mellow light from the fast setting sun emphasized every wrinkle in hair. The female leading the herd looked straight at the photographer, her eye a glowing amber dot in the heavy folds of skin. Her gaze was full of respect and intelligence. I couldn't agree more. Political Reflections, Bloomberg View has an interesting piece on Xi Jinping. There are many faces to Xi Jinping, the most powerful Chinese leader in decades. There's a tough guy Xi cracking down on corruption and overhauling the world's biggest military. There's statesman Xi, the self-styled global champion of free trade and combating climate change following Donald Trump's election as US president. 
There's nationalist zeal brushing aside an international ruling against China's territorial claims. And there's ruthless zeal coming down hard on dissent. There's communist zeal expanding the party's reach over the economy and society. And there's reformist zeal advocating a decisive role for markets in the world's number two economy. Now, as Z moves closer to a second five-year term, the question is which of these faces will predominate and whether he'll succeed in making China a genuine rival to the US as the world's number one power. Challenging years of collective leadership in elite Chinese politics, Z64 has taken charge of numerous policy committees some beyond the president's usual remit. He received a rare Communist Party accolade of core leader ahead of a twice a decade Congress in October, a meeting that is expected to confirm the start of his second term as party chief and may signal whether he will defy convention in 2022, as predicted by some analysts, and serve a third term. As Commander-in-Chief, Xi has demanded a force that's ready to win wars. He has toughened China's stance on Hong Kong, an autonomous territory, and Taiwan, of which it claims sovereignty. He has also expanded the country's presence and assertiveness in Asia's disputed waters. At home, Xi is grappling with transforming a slowing debt-ridden economy through pledges to tackle bloated state-owned enterprises and a slew of other reforms. His anti-corruption drivers snared more than one million officials, including a party chief who was seen as a possible future leader. Trump has criticized him for being soft on North Korea and unfair on trade while describing him as a very good man. Xi's vision for the masses, dubbed the Chinese dream, includes doubling incomes by 2020 and establishing China as fully developed, rich and powerful by 2049. And uh, at the end of August, I wrote a piece, China Rising, and I was talking about Xi Jinping's One Belt, One Road program, binding the world to Beijing because all the roads and railways have but one destination, and that is China. In that same piece, I was writing about, apart from a few half-hearted and timid phonops, freedom of navigation operations, China has established control over the South China Sea. It has created artificial islands and then militarized those artificial islands across the South China Sea. It is a mind-boggling geopolitical advance any which way you care to cut it. China has advanced its footprint in Pakistan, where it has leased the Gwadar port, giving China and Central Asia access to the Gulf region and the Middle East for 43 years. Sri Lanka, which gorged on Chinese debt, has had, has had to disgorge the Hambantota port to its creditor. Recently, we saw China formally open a military facility in Djibouti. These moves taken together speak to a material Chinese advance. The pivot to Asia, which was supposed to contain China, is dead in the water. China has sprung that trap. Interesting piece by the uh, Lowy Institute coming full circle in the Sino-Indian relationship, despite the recent BRICS summit theme of a stronger partnership for a brighter future. The two-month standoff between China and India, the Doklam Plateau, which China refers to as Doglang, has confirmed a bit of truth territorial dispute is still a constant thorn in the Sino-Indian relationship. And in that same piece of China Rising, I said it's as if Xi Jinping is goading Narendra Modi, who would be seriously ill-advised to take on the Chinamen in that remote plateau. I like this from the FT. In the event of a Sino-US trade war, Boeing would be the meat of the sandwich. State Councillor Yang Jiaqi said that at the invitation of Xi Jinping, President Trump will pay a state visit to China during the year. Richard Gans, the United States had rather predictably been mugged by reality during the most recent negotiations on sanctions. Look, he's a very calibrated kid over there in Pyongyang. Um, and uh, I thought, you know, Nikki Haley whimpered 
uh, with these sanctions, but it was what could be achieved. But at the same time, I think that was calibrated in giving him some room to take a step back. So I think we might see a little bit of pressure cooker easing here for a few days or weeks. Um, uh, sorry, Hope Hicks is a Trump team survivor and now communications director. She's only 28. And from the very beginning, Nunberg says Hicks believed Trump would win the White House. She really understood the president's brand, that he's a mogul, that he's a magnet, Nunberg says. And she said to me that people in the primary states were going to view him as a president because they watched him on The Apprentice, which was true. Russian military, Syria government troops control 85% of Syria. It has been a singular success at stopping the regime and changes in their tracks. China says it backs Myanmar's efforts to safeguard stability, and there, are, there is a backstory that China might have been given some concessions in the same area. Rohingya refugees watch their village burn across the border in Myanmar. Photograph from the AFP. How one Rohingya Muslim man carried his parents for nearly a hundred miles to escape Burma's death squads. This is from C.J. Werleman. And I said, tweeted in response, when this man gets to heaven, the angels will sing to receive him. And it took me to the poem, For Whom the Bell Tolls. No man is an island entire of itself. Each is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manor of thine own, or of thine friends were. Each man's death diminishes me, for I am involved in mankind. Therefore send not to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Basically, every house in Florida Keys was affected as some residents are being allowed back. That's a photograph from Yan Photo. Currency markets, let's take a look. Euro dollar, 119.80. Dollar index, 91.92. Dollar yen, 110.07. Swiss franc, 0.9602. The pound, 133.08. This is lofty heights, in my opinion, at this moment. Uh, the Australian dollar has been doing quite well, 0.8033. India rupee 63.999. Um, South Korean won 11.2870. Brazilian real 312.52. Egyptian pound 17.6455. And the rand is back above 13, just 13.0065. Uh, I'm going to post uh, an Elliott wave chart of the dollar index. I can't help wondering if everything is now in the price. It's been a precipitous drop. And really, you know, you've got a lot of... I think the potential is for Trump to actually pull something off with his new uh, Democratic buddies, you know, somehow um, to do some kind of deal, particularly on tax. Euro versus the dollar, I'll put up a three-month chart, 119.77. Feels a little bit heavy as if it's got to come a bit lower before it starts going higher again. Dollar yen, this is a chart from triple leverage, last trading at 110.07. 110.10 is a bit of resistance. Um, it's difficult to judge, but given my view that I think Kim's going to calm down in Pyongyang, I think we should see some risk on and yen off trades coming. Euro avoids first two day drop in weeks as options see recovery. Investors are less enthusiastic than the media on new Apple products. Take a look at that. The Apple iPhone uh, is seen in this photograph from David Paul Morris on Bloomberg. Apple has gained about 40% this year. On expectations, the iPhone X, pronounced 10, will reignite sales growth after a rare decline last year. The iPhone accounts for almost two-thirds of total sales and it's a hub for most of Apple's other products and services. Base price, $999 for the 64 gigabyte version. Boasts a brighter and more energy efficient OLED display screen. A front facing 3D sensor array recognizes users' faces to unlock the handset and turns facial expressions into animated emoji icons like Animoji. 
While almost one in five iPhone users are willing to spend more than $1,000 on the new handset, just 11% of consumers overall would be willing to do so, a recent Barclays survey found. This is a chart showing that Apple is iPhone. The share of revenue created by iPhones will only increase due to iPhone 10. That's from Simon. Apple shares slipped after Facegate to see this chart from the store board. Commodity markets, let's take a look. This is a chart of gold. This is from Triple Leverage 1330. We're now in this 1320 range to 1350, um, it seems to me. US crude futures settled at $48.23. I still think we've got a big wobble coming before the end of the year. Whiskey Fund plans to liquidate assets after beating cash target. Um, the rare whiskey Apex 1000, an index of collectible bottles, outperformed other assets, including gold, fine wine, the shares of drinks giant Diageo in the first six months of the year. Brazil is investigating the reports of a massacre among Amazonian tribe by gold miners, eight to ten members of a remote indigenous group were allegedly killed by men working for illegal prospectors in Jabari Valley. This photograph caught my attention. Investors have poured $19.2 billion into local currency emerging market debt funds this year. That's the fastest pace of flow since 2010. A lot of the money flowing into emerging market bond funds is simply chasing a rally in developing market currencies that can flip a lot more quickly than economic investors may have wandered into a casino not even realized it. Update, this is an extract from the UN Security Council report that says Tanzania is being investigated for breaking UN North Korea embargo. That's from Daniel Ashby. It's an interesting development. I like this, the beauty of Zimbabwe without toxic politics. That's from Ali Naka. And it is now the Jacaranda season here in Nairobi, just beginning. Interesting report from the Commonwealth, China's BRI boosting trade opportunities for sub-Saharan Africa. No, these are not the Swiss Alps nor the Himalayas. These are the Ruizori Mountains in Uganda. After 50 years of repressive rule by the same family, the people of Togo rebelled. Interesting article by Geoffrey York. It's still not clear how this plays out. The government is holding on. But the numbers, when I look on social media, are so overwhelming. President Jacob Zuma, seen here during the commemoration of the 40th anniversary of the passing of Steve Bantu Biko. Zulu boy from Soweto becomes first Standard Bank Black CEO. South African all shares just off a record up 11.28% so far this year. Dollar versus Rand. Hovering around the 13 mark, Egyptian pound at 17.6455. In this photo, President Buhari is seen arriving at Kaduna for the Olam factory commissioning in Nigeria. Soyinka, it is sickening to canvas, to canvas for Buhari's second term now. Nigeria's economy expanded to end its worst slump in 25 years. Um, GDP grew 0.55% in the three months through June from a year earlier. Um, and I was talking about Nigeria and South Africa and saying both countries have bounced off the bottom, but the sustainability is in question. Nigeria needs a single FX policy and South Africa needs more policy certainty. Nigeria all shares up 31.71% so far this year. The Ghana Stock Exchange is up 38.51% so far this year. Uh, the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, which is the best performing stock market in Africa this year, its market cap is nearing $9 billion. Here in Kenya, you can see a guard of honor in Parliament buildings mounted by the B Company of the Eldoret Base 9th Battalion Kenya Rifles. It was on the occasion of the 12th Parliament and the President making his speech. Uh, the opposition uh, 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 MPs except for one apparently boycotted his speech which I thought was a rather good one um, to give you a couple of quotes from Mombasa to Moyale we are all one people children of Kenya and I think that was the inclusive note people want to hear coming from him he said there is no lacuna 
the Kenyan opposition, of course, is threatening protests over the electoral body CEO. Ezra Chiloba should be removed or the opposition will hold mass demonstrations, Norman Magaya. Uh, there will be no election, he said. Uh, the opposition group also plans to start contempt proceedings against the IEBC for failing to comply with the Supreme Court order to allow full scrutiny of its computer service. Martha Karua has asked the country's High Court to annul the entire election. Uh, including gubernatorial, senatorial and legislation votes citing irregularities and illegalities. The NASA leader, Riley Digger, seen in a blue suit, seen here arriving at anniversary towers for the meeting with the IABC, the meeting failed to happen. My conclusions are like this. NASA is out of cash. I mean, one's got to be hard-nosed about one's analysis, so in my view, they're out of cash. And they're notoriously poor spenders, I know that for a fact. They'll raise a hundred million and spend about thirty. The rest sort of doesn't get spent. Whereas, um, yeah, so that's the first point, uh, and therefore I think that pushes them towards an asymmetric strategy, uh, degrading the IABC, refusing to accept the result, keeping a strategy of tension in the streets. Um, it's cheap to do. The president has the wherewithal, I think, and the advantage of it in order to solidify his base and from which to raid the opposition. And for example, he solidified it yesterday. Uh, Peter Munya, who was from Meru, uh, came back into the fold. Therefore, on balance, I'm of the view that Jubilee have the firepower to make it count this time, as they did last time, in point of fact. There are risks to that prognosis, and I would think I would like the president to stay well above the fray. CAK has approved the acquisition of a trading stake in the Kenyan unit of global insurance broker AL Aon by a South African private equity firm. Uh, Nairobi All Share firm 0.26% yesterday, it's up 25.06% year to date. NSC20 was up 0.88% yesterday, that's up um, a total of 20.82% so far uh, this year. Once again, thank you for stopping by.